Mercedes have turned up at the Belgian Grand Prix with a surprisingly large upgrade package on their car. And yes, once again, the center of those upgrades are indeed the side pods. Now, this seems to be a little bit of a trend, not just for Mercedes, but for quite a lot of the other teams up and down the bit lane. Let's not forget, Red Bull had that massive upgrade just last week in Hungary. Well, Mercedes, they had that big upgrade earlier in the season when they went away from those zero pods or hide pods, as some people choose to call them, to a more conventional side pod shape. Well, coming into the Belgian Grand Prix, they've again reshaped the side pod duct, and that's the most obvious sign of what is a far more substantial upgrade to the car. Now, previously, the Mercedes side pod duct stopped about here, and it was a bit more, it was a bit of a smaller duct, and it was a, it was very different shape as well. It certainly didn't have this deep U-shaped section at the bottom. Massive change then, but still some of the major components around the side pods remain unchanged. The mirrors up here, they haven't changed. And you've got this big section out here. Well, this is the side impact structure. There's not very much you can do about that. You can't change that around from car to car. It's homologated, which means it's locked in. It's frozen for the design for the chassis for the rest of the year. So that's the, that's the look of the side pod ducts. But when you take a look at the overall shape of the side pod, from the side of the car, best way to look at it, you can start to see a few other trends, a few, a few little bits of inspiration perhaps from other cars sneaking into the Mercedes design. Just have a look at the floor stay here. This is something a lot of the teams have to keep the floor stiff when they're driving along so the floor's not wobbling around when it gets a lot of aerodynamic load on. So if it does that, then you get into that horrible zone of porpoising where the car's bouncing down the road and becomes impossible to operate aerodynamically. So Mercedes, they have their floor stay here, going up to what looks like the top of the bodywork. But keep watching, the floor stay goes right through a chunk of hollow bodywork and carries on to the main portion of the car and mounts into something far more solid above the gearbox a little bit later under that bodywork. But all the way through, you can see this floor stay running right through the side of the car. And that is the big giveaway to what Mercedes have done and indeed which car Mercedes has taken inspiration from. Now, looking at the newly updated Mercedes, this is George Russell's car, from behind the rear wing earlier on, you can see this very distinctive side pod shape dropping down, and then you've got that big curved section running through. Now, Mercedes had one of these drag-reducing sections on the upper body all the way through the season so far, and they've had that for a while. But the overall side pod shape, it looks familiar, right? Well, have a look at this. Aston Martin, the green team that uses a lot of Mercedes components. There's a Mercedes gearbox at the back of this green car, a Mercedes power unit underneath the bodywork. And sure enough, Aston Martin, those deep undercut side pods, some people like to call these water slides or just gullies. I just like to call them big valleys in the middle of the side pod. And again, Aston Martin's upper bodywork shape, very similar to that of the Mercedes. Not a surprise because of what's underneath the bodywork. But actually, this big swooping shape has been a real sort of trend in F1 over this season. And it actually all started last year with Ferrari and the F175 when they introduced these very distinctive soap dish shapes on the side of the bodywork. Alpine and other teams then followed on. Now, some student-led CFD projects showed that this design sort of improves the car in terms of drag performance. So it reduces the wind resistance of the car at high speed, so the car can drive through the air much, much faster. So that's why you've got these low drag side pods and why it's so important to have them at Spa Francorchamps. Now, Spa is one of the fastest circuits on the calendar, not quite as fast as Monza, and we're not quite sure about Las Vegas yet. That's going to be an interesting one we'll talk about later. But that's another reason that Mercedes bought another big upgrade package to the car at the rear. This is what you sort of expect. You've got the low drag rear wing here, so a much shallower angle of the main plane, the upper section, again, a little bit steeper than some of the other cars up and down the grid, perhaps, but still quite a shallow rear wing. Very much a low drag specification, and I suspect we'll see an evolution of this wing at Monza later in the year. What they use at Vegas? Hmm. Let's have a think and let's have a see. The big difference here, the, wing, the thing that everybody's going to be talking about is, of course, the side pod shape, the side pod duct, because it's not just the side pod duct that's changed and the top shape along here. It's actually the shape of the bodywork as you come down underneath the Petronas logo and look at that bulging out section that's coming out here. So clearly Mercedes still trying to get a little bit of air around the rear of the floor, which is something they've been trying to do since they introduced this whole concept of car, initially with the, the zero side pods and then the, the revised version of that. 
getting the air working how they want over the rear of the floor is clearly something Mercedes are playing quite hard at. Now, a lot of people are going to be talking about, well, look, Mercedes, yeah, the start of the season wasn't great for them. The wind tunnel and CFD restrictions should be hitting them because they did finish pretty well in last year's Constructors' Championship. They were a bit behind, but they're still up in the top half of the field. They don't have as much aerodynamic development time as some other teams. Well, this is the thing about side pod development. A lot of people are talking about this with Red Bull. When you're doing the stuff with the air that goes through the side pod, all of that aerodynamics underneath the bodywork, all of that ducting through the radiators, which sort of sit, there's something about here in the car underneath the uh, underneath the bodywork there, and you've got your cooler panels in there. Those, those panels, those panels under the bodywork, the coolers themselves, developing those parts doesn't come out of your aerodynamic testing allocation. You can study those airflows under the bodywork in a completely unlimited way. It's a free upgrade, if you like. You aren't allowed to measure any forces, so you can't calculate how much downforce they're making, but you can look at the pressure, the air pressure as it moves through the through that section underneath the ducting and the bodywork, and you can look at the flow pattern itself. So that's what Mercedes have been doing, but also this new side pod shape, that'll have taken a huge amount of trunk out of their CFD and wind tunnel allocation. So we'll have to wait and see to see if this really works for Mercedes around the Spa circuit, but in these wet conditions, I really don't think we're going to find a huge amount out about whether this package works or not.